Hey you guys, it's Gucci, it's your boy as you came out the first Black Super Saiyan, we're on this planet. I got a video for you guys where I go ahead and do this because I want to smash the time with my premiere of the Captain Marvel Connection TV spot. And I want to smash the uh this article I'm about to do on the Captain Marvel first screening revealed. The first screening reactions revealed. And there's some comments in here where I'm like, that ain't a good sign off top. Or you could just chop it up to fans being perplexed by cute stuff and their dumb, idiotic, cute stuff just takes them over and they're just like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. And they just sideline the other character and be all like, we don't even care about you like that. Ugh. Let's go ahead and let's get into this video. Uh, Squid Guard and Captain Marvel is an article. Follow your boy on Twitter, follow your boy on Instagram. Let's go ahead and let's get into this as your kid out the first black Super Saiyan. Let's go. Captain Marvel first screening reaction revealed by Brandon Davis, January 30th, 2019. Very, very recent. Surprised I didn't see this. This was deep hidden. I think they was hiding this for a reason. Because I saw some YouTube videos on this and I was like, I'm going to throw my opinion out there. The first screening in Captain Marvel has reportedly taken place, prompting a positive reaction to one character in particular. According to industry Steve, insider Steve Wentraub, the big conversation after Captain Marvel showed off in advance screening was in regards to Carol Danvers' cat, Goose. Hearing Captain Marvel screened, one tribe wrote in a tweet, after it ended, everyone was talking about the cat, stole the show. Wait, 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 this is first, is this first, this is first reaction for the whole film, right? The first screening of Captain Marvel has poorly taken place. After it ended, everyone was talking about the cat, stole the show. Ugh. Did Brie Larson steal the show? Ah, oh, that's not good news. While the cat's meow doesn't seem to be any solid indication of whether the movie as a whole was good or bad, the end of the tweet could offer some hope for the, those with questions. Must see this movie stat. One child says, surely he wouldn't want to see a movie he heard was bad, right? Of course, the cat, which seems to be still in the show, is a key character from Marvel Comics, the world fed house cow goes by the name of Chewy in the, those books, but has seemingly been renamed Goose for the purpose of the Captain Marvel movie. It's an interesting choice considering Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home acknowledged the existence of Star Wars movies within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, given the fact that Captain Marvel said in the 1990s, the Top Gun influence might simply be more important to cap to character of Carol Danvers. So, look, I don't I don't read much of the Captain Marvel comics. So, is Goose a house cat? Does he have superpowers or something? Does Chewie, does, does this ha cat have superpowers or something? It's also unclear whether Goose will be a flirt in the dangerous... Okay, the dangerous alien race which Carol's cat is in the comics. A number of science fiction elements come into play due to Chewie's alien race. But none have been on display in Captain Marvel trailers or promotional materials yet. Fans, however, are hoping Carol's pet will feature those comic book traits and play a key part in the film as a result. Huh. Ugh. Captain Marvel launches on March 8th, while Avengers Endgame lands on April 26th, followed by Spider-Man Far From Home on July 5th. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home and Endgame are looking better than, than the Captain Marvel right now. I'm just saying. Avengers Endgame. We all, I'm only watching Captain Marvel because it has to fill in for Endgame. That's it really the only reason we watch our filler film. It'll be like Ant-Man and the Watch. A film you don't necessarily need to watch, but you just need to watch the post credit scene of Ant-Man and the Watch and you're good. For Infinity War and Endgame. Um. Okay, okay. Remember, these are probably the same people that like Bumblebee and Venom. These are probably the people that love the new Star Wars episode, the new Star Wars trilogy, and love it and defend it, and will say it's better than the prequels in the original trilogy. But they love the new. They probably love the new Disney Star Wars, and they probably are on the Star Wars prequels hate train. Or these gonna be the casual moviegoers that just like to watch anything for the sake of it, as long as it's funny and it got the, the poop and the fart jokes. You're all set. Look, I ain't gonna really take these people's words for 
the this live audience words for word because mm, what kind of movies they into off top? Because if they said a cat stole the show, if, and they raving about a cat and not talking about anything else, huh? Hmm. Oh. I mean, it's not really much to say. It's blatant obvious. You know, people could be blinded by dumb stuff, but if people are talking about a cat, look, it's just like when Guardians drop, people, a lot of people talking about Groot, uh, talking about Groot, but other people will talk about some other characters like Drax and stuff. Groot didn't steal the show for Guardians. It was people, yeah, Groot had a big part in it, and it was a heartfelt part, but people still talk about other characters like Drax or Rocket. Or even Star Lord. So as far as this goes, this isn't a good indication of the film being good. But that does not say the film won't make between 700 and 800 million like I expect it to. Or it may make 700 to 900 million. Possibly. I don't think it's going to hit it. Only way it's going to hit a billion is if like this movie really, they go on some activist stuff, which they are. I read those that article, Brie. Where she goes some real activist stuff and is in hella women and hella comic fans, comic book fans of Captain Marvel come out the floodgates, really support this film, and then hella women come out because like, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh my gosh, Captain Marvel, yay! <sighs> Wonder Woman, but you know, if the film's good, yeah, okay, cool. If it's good, okay. But we all know why I'm watching Captain Marvel. Let's not forget. Because I need to know. Where has Captain Marvel been at? For Iron Man 1. Up until Infinity War. Was she freely flying around space? Or has she been locked up by some very powerful individuals? If she's been locked up by some very powerful individuals, makes sense. Or if she's been trapped in some other universe and couldn't re get back to the main universe where everybody is at. Okay, cool. If she is, if she is freely flying, flying around space, saving the day, being a hero and stuff, ever since Iron Man one to now, up until Infinity War, and Thanos is still alive, even though Thanos is publicly going from planet to planet killing people, and everyone like the, even the Guardians knew of Thanos. Um, I'm going to have an issue. Because I'm going to be like, uh, why is Thanos still alive? Because let's not remember. You know, it's a fall to fight. You don't hype this girl up like she all that. Don't say, oh, she's strong. Oh, she can move planets. And Nick Samuel Jackson, come on now, bro. How that information slip out your mouth? Oh, she can time travel. Don't throw that stuff out there like that. Let us be surprised. Let us see it. Don't come out to flood it. Somehow she's going to be the strongest. She's going to be this. She's going to be that. Don't do that. You hyping her up before the movie even... Look, I get you're hyping her up, but you giving her a little bit much. And we haven't even seen the movie yet. You already told me that she can move a planet. Can I, Can you wait for me to see that in the movie? She can time travel. Can y'all wait until I see the movie so I can judge it for myself? Now I got these worries going in. You know, got to keep your mouth shut. Like, just keep your mouth shut. And, you know, it's, look, it's the same thing like this. It's the same thing like this. Yes. Black Panther was a film where hella black people came out the cuts for. I do agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm ready to okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I got it. Back to what I was saying. Look, as far as her character goes, as far as this goes, you guys, this could look. The movie is obviously gonna make money because they're they're backed up by Disney and Marvel. They're gonna make money. It's a Marvel character. Disney movie is gonna make its bread. The movie quality may not stand up. I seen that Connections TV spot. This movie is not going to be like Winter Soldier. 
as far as tone. This movie's gonna be like any other MCU movie with a lighthearted tone, like Thor one, Thor two. Um, Thor two is a very dark film in a way. Thor two is definitely darker than Thor one. I'll say that much. It's gonna be another funny MCU film, lighthearted, you know, all that good jazz, all that stuff. It's gonna be another one of those. Am I supposed to be excited for another lighthearted, funny MCU film? Oh my gosh. It's going to be like Iron Man 2, funny, lighthearted. Iron Man 3, funny and lighthearted. Avengers 2, funny and lighthearted. So, there'll be people trying to hype up Captain Marvel. She's like, oh, you're, trying, you're plotting on her downfall. I'm like, okay, I guess you can say that in a way. Sure, yeah. Because I'm really not feeling the character. I don't feel the comic character. And I'm not feeling her character herself. Just the same way, I don't, I don't like... It's Iron Man's comic character, and I don't like his uh, movie character. So, you know, I still watch Iron Man movies. There's some stuff I don't like about the character, but I can still watch it. There's some stuff I already don't like about Captain Marvel, but I can watch it. Won't be as excited for it like I would be excited for watching when I watch Black Panther. And when I was, let me get back to the Black Panther thing. So when I say Black Panther, look, a bunch of black people, they come out. I don't know what people did expect it. It's a film with a, a 99% majority black cast. You don't expect black people to come out to go see it. There's many people that call Black Panther overrated. Every time Black Panther comes up, overrated, overrated, overrated. Y'all stop that shit. I, I, I hate that. Look, I'm going to tell y'all this much. I'm going to tell y'all this much. Black Panther, it was a good film. The really downside of it was near the climax where the visuals got bad in the end the visuals other than that for the rest of the movie basic cool not bad but in the ending the visuals got bad the visuals got bad when the, when that rhino showed up and black panther and killmonger started fighting so yeah and off top off top uh if y'all want to go see this go ahead I ain't saying don't go see it. I'm just saying. If a cat is what makes... If, if a cat is what people are talking about, I'm very worried. It's like when Venom dropped. Y'all know when Venom dropped, nobody was talking about the script. That awful script. People was talking about Eddie Brock and Venom. They was just talking about one thing, saying this is the best film ever. ever. You know, you want to know when Bumblebee dropped? One of the only two things people was talking about? Charlie and Bumblebee. And the G1 Cybertron scene. Two things. That people was hyping up about the movie. And it's a 93% of Rotten Tomatoes. That's why I tell you don't use Rotten Tomatoes. Just because you say one good thing about a film doesn't make it good. Look. I like. Uh, Brandon Fraser, The Mummy, right? Watch. Why, 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 watch me do this. Man. Brandon Fraser, he shows off that macho man mentality in the Mummy movies. It's amazing. And then someone could ask me, uh, so what else? Nah, man, this dude, he brings back the macho man mentality. It's just, it's, it, it's just so fire. You know, we're kind of missing this nowadays in, in our time, but he brings it back, man. He, that macho, you know, kind of action, action kind of character, the action adventure character. Okay, what about the script? Uh, it's what you mean? It's 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 cool, bro. Uh, you know, it, it it was funny too, and it has some scary moments. Okay, what about the script? But uh... and see, that's the thing about the mummy. I can't really defend the script because the script is, <sighs> but it's a good, fun, and entertaining movie to still watch. Same thing for Aquaman. I can say Aquaman has dope visuals, dope superhero action sequences, amazing visuals, fun fun actors. Nicole Kidman, William Dafoe, Patrick Wilson were the best actors in that film, period. But then someone asked me, what about that script, though? And I'm like, uh... 
Uh, I don't know. The Aquaman script, it was kind of meh. I can say the same thing for Guardians. Man, Guardians 1, Guardians 2 was fun, entertaining. It was this, it was that. And what about the script? Uh, What about Thor 3? It was fun and entertaining. It was this, it was that. Okay, what about the script? Uh, See? It's those things. You got to be able to touch all those points within the film. Like Road Talk. Especially the script. Especially the script. You got to have a good, somewhat of a good script that makes sense. And it has little inconsistencies, bro. I'm just saying. Because I'm starting to hold movies back for their inconsistencies now. Because that stuff, that happens too much in movies. Where movies get inconsistent. And they have these plot holes and inconsistencies. It happens too much in films. I, I can't let it slide no more. It's too repetitive, happens way too often, it needs to stop. Films are becoming way too inconsistent now within their own stories, their own story by themselves. Because in one scene, I'm like, wait a minute, but you just, that kind of shit. That happens too much in movies. That needs a, some, there need to be some films where the story is so well knit and tight and t- cut together that you can be able to explain almost everything and use some sense to explain almost everything. Some films be all like, oh, fuck, I can't explain that. I don't know. But look, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. There's your boy Kid Out, the first black Super Saiyan to revive on this planet. Go set that peace, love, positivity. Deuces.